Hey there, I'm Robert from the Rive creative team and welcome back to this short tutorial on the basics of creating UI in Rive. In the last video, we set up a basic main menu screen that works with mouse listeners. In this video, I'll show you how to take that menu screen and update the inputs in your state machine so that you can use a controller to control the state machine. Once again, it's important to note that we'll be skipping over a lot of the animation steps and mostly focusing on how to set up the state machine to get the type of control that we're looking for. I'll be linking some helpful videos down in the description. And if you have any questions, go ahead and leave us a comment and we'll get back to you as quickly as we can. With that being said, let's get started. Okay, so in the last video, we got this page set, uh, set up so that we could use um, mouse listeners to control what our selection uh, is highlighted here in this menu. Now, if you remember, this is done at the component level. Um, so we have a listener here that detects whether or not our mouse is on this button's hitbox. And if it is, we set the is hovered boolean to true. And if it's not, we set it to false. Now we're gonna need to update this if we want it to work with a controller, because the difference in using a controller versus a mouse is that with a mouse, you have a cursor and we can use those hitboxes to detect where the cursor is and that will display the correct uh, menu item that's hovered. But when you have a controller, you don't have a cursor typically. Some games do, but most of the time you're working in a list. And since we don't have a hitbox, we actually need to convert this into uh, a list of selectable objects. Now let me show you how we're gonna do this and then we'll actually go and do it together and I'm gonna set the keys and show you step-by-step step how it works. Okay, here's a demo of uh, how this is actually set up. Now you're gonna notice right away that um, we, knew, we now have a new uh, state machine layer called menu index and it's got five different animations on it, zero, one, two, three, and four. And those animations are hooked to the any state and they're using the menu index number input as their condition. So this menu index is what's gonna get attached to the controller, whether that is the thumbstick. Um, so at runtime, you can hook this up to the a joysticks uh, or a controller's joystick so that when you press up on the joystick, um, you know, that that uh, increases or decreases, however, however it is you wanna set it up. Uh, or, you know, you could set it up on the bumpers. It could be any uh, different thing. But anyways, this is what is going to get hooked to that and actually drive that. Now, we also can use the mouse. And instead of using listeners on the component level, we're going to bubble those um, things up and actually use the state machine level or this main menu level uh, where we're going to add in some listeners um, here. So that's all the stuff that we're gonna do to get this working with a controller. Uh, for some of you who are really familiar with the state machine, this should be enough. You should be able to um, go off and run with that. But if not, if you need a little bit more guidance, I'm gonna show you how I did that uh, next. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do to get this uh, component ready for our page is actually change how these listeners here work. Instead of having our Boolean, this is Harvard Boolean change, whenever we mouse in and out of a hitbox, um, we're gonna use an event and signal an event whenever we do that. Now, the reason we're changing uh, this to work with an event and not actually um, change this Boolean is that um, when we take this button and put it in here and actually start keying the different inputs in those animations uh, that we'll be switching between, we don't wanna have any um, conflicting um, inputs being set uh, with the mouse or um, you know what's happening in those animations. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna remove that the ability for this listener to change the Boolean. So I'm gonna take these out and now we're gonna add an event. So to add an event, we can either go up here to the events tool, click that and that will activate the event tool. And then you can click to add a new event or you can hold shift and then hit E and that will activate the tool as well. All right, so I've added an event and I'm gonna change the name and call it is hovered event so that I know it's an event. All right, now going through the same process that we used last time to set up our listeners to change this Boolean, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the hitbox, hit the plus button on the listener, and then we have a listener that's automatically targeting the hitbox. And instead of changing an input, I'm going to delete that 
and we are going to fire an event instead. And the event that we're going to fire is the is hovered event. So now when we uh, press play, you can see that whenever we hover over this, uh, the is hovered event fires off and we can still change that Boolean here in the inputs panel, but the listener isn't um, changing this anymore. All right. So that's all we needed to do on the component level. Now we can come over here to the page level and get everything set up. I'm going to do just a little bit of cleaning here um, and add in some folders. So the first folder I'm going to create is for the in slash out. So I can put all of these in here and then I'm going to create a new folder. And I'm going to call this one the menu index so that we know what all this is for. And then we're going to need um, five different animations. Now, the reason that we need five animations um, is that this is going to get hooked up to the any state. So we want to have enough animations to account for any configuration of Booleans that we could have. Now, in this case, we have um, we have a state where none of the Booleans can be selected or one state for each one of these Booleans to be true. So that's why we need five. All right, I'm going to rename these and you can rename these however you want. It can be zero, one, two, three, four, like I do it, or you could call it um, none selected, um, you know, new game or continue or what, you know, you could actually name these the name of the states. I just do it with the numbers because I know what they're going to be. And it makes the uh, state machine setup process a little bit easier. All right. Now, in these animations, we're going to be keying two different things. The first thing that we're going to key is uh, the is hovered Boolean. So on the zero animation, that means nothing is selected. We're going to make sure that we key the is hovered Boolean to false in all of the different uh, components. So we've got three. Now we've got four. All right, and we can take this. We can copy this and go into the next animation. So in the one animation, that means that the first object is selected. So we can go into menu item one, just expand this twizzle until we get to the input that we've keyed. And instead of that being false, it's now going to be true. And you'll remember that these others are false, so we don't actually need to key anything else. Then we can go to the next one, paste all the keys from this animation, and then just go into the next menu item and change it to true. And we'll just do that for all of them. So let's get this third one, check that one to true, go to four, and then check this one to true. So now if we go through our different animations and play it, you'll see that uh, on zero, nothing is hovered. One, the first one's hovered. Two, the second one's hovered. Three, the third one's hovered. And four, the fourth one's hovered. All right, so we've got that. Now we can go into our state machine and actually add these animations. Click those and drop them into my folder. I'm going to rename this layer and call it, um, this is the in slash out layer. The next thing that we're going to do, create a new layer and let's call this the menu index layer. All right. Then we can drag all of our animations in here. Let's create some transitions. Now, the reason that we're using the any state is again, we're going to set the state machine up to work for controller and mouse and keyboard. So with a mouse, you can go to these states in any different order that you want. Um, but if you're just using a controller, uh, it would probably be set up like this, where you can just go back and forth like this, because you could go forwards through this menu, or you, you could go backwards through the menu. Um, but instead of doing that, we can just set it up with the any state. Like this, and it just adds, um, or it um, removes the need to add a bunch of different transitions. Okay, so we've got all our transitions set up. Um, we still need a number input. So what we can do is click on our transition here, hit the plus button for a condition, and then go to new input number. Then we can rename that and call it menu index. And then we just need to assign our conditions. So zero is already set up when menu index is equal to zero. Play the zero animation. When menu index equals one, play animation one. When it's two, let's play animation two. When it's three, we'll play animation three. And when it's four, 
we'll play animation four. So now if we start up our state machine and hit the is open Boolean and go through our number index, you can see that the correct animations are playing. Okay, at this point, we are ready for controller. Controller setup, uh, we don't need to do anything else to get the index here working. But what we do need to do is reintroduce our listeners so that the mouse um, can regain control over this list. Now, instead of putting listeners on our menu item component, we're gonna put those listeners here on the page level uh, to get things working. So let's start with the first menu item. What we're gonna do is select that nested artboard here and then add a new listener. Now, you'll see that that auto-populated our listener with a couple things. The first thing is the target, which is the menu item one. And when that is hovered event goes off from menu item one, we can select an input to change. Now you can see all of the exposed inputs that we have for our nested artboards, but we also have the inputs for our top level state machine. So what we're gonna do is use our menu index that we've set up and say that when the first menu item is hovered, when that is hovered event goes off, we're gonna set that menu index to one. So now when we play the state machine, and we're on, you know, let's say menu index one, that's how the controller would work, but let's say it's here. Now we have the mouse actually working because when that is hovered event goes off, we're setting this index to one. And now we just need to repeat those steps for the other menu items. Uh, there's two ways to do this, um, which is to individually select them and then, you know, configure it. But what I usually do is I'll duplicate that first listener that I made and then just change the target. So now it's just the new target and I can update the, um, the input there. Now the reason that I do it this way and not the other way is that when you get into listeners that are controlling a lot more inputs and you're doing a lot more of the same um, things where you're just adjusting the target and the number, this way is a little bit easier. So again, I like to do it this way where I duplicate it and then just update the target and the input. All right, let's do the last one. Update the target to menu item four, and then change the menu index to four. So again, uh, just to review, all of these listeners, you can see that they're targeting different buttons, and they're listening for the is hovered event from each one of those buttons. And when the is hovered event goes off, depending on which event it is, we'll change our menu index. So now, when we open it up, we can use our number input to change through uh, the different uh, buttons, or we can use these listeners here that are listening for the event that comes from our button to change that number input. So at this point, we can now use controller and mouse uh, via listeners. So that's what I wanted to show you in this video. In the next video, we're gonna talk a little bit more about events, and I'm gonna show you how we need to change this state machine setup slightly so that we can um, go back and forth between different pages. So I hope you join us for that one. Uh, if you like this video, leave us a like and a comment. If you have any questions, let us know, and we'll see you in the next one.